As President-elect Joe Biden gets ready to take office, he is facing pressure from lawmakers to address several issues involving tech companies. According to The Washington Post, the incoming Biden administration is facing bipartisan calls to expand antitrust enforcement of tech companies, as well as the role those companies played in the deadly attack on the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. For more on this, I want to bring in Roger McNamee. He is the author of the New York Times bestseller, Zucked, Waking Up to the Facebook Catastrophe. Uh, Roger, welcome. Several social media sites suspended President Trump and key allies following the Capitol attack. And a research firm called Zignal Labs found online misinformation about election fraud dropped more than 70 percent after those suspensions. Could we see tech companies continue to take a more aggressive stance against misinformation under the Biden administration? So this is a great question, but I think the answer in general is no. I think what happened around the January 6th insurrection is a unique event. These companies have been used as a form for a long time, and they've been playing with fire. They knew there were problems, and they ignored them. The Republican Party exploited their willingness to embrace extremism, particularly hate speech, disinformation, and conspiracy theories. And so I think the companies face legal liability. They realized that they had played a role not only in radicalizing people into QAnon and the other groups that were part of the insurrection, but that the event itself was organized on Facebook and other platforms, and they were aware of future events. And as a consequence, their legal liability would grow if they allowed uh, President Trump and his key, uh, if you will, enablers to continue on their platform. So they had to act. But I do not think that these companies have seen the light. I think as soon as they can, they're going to go back to promoting extremism because that's sadly part of the business model. So it's interesting. President Trump threatened to do away with Section 230, which shields tech companies from legal action over content posted on their platforms. So how might we see the Biden administration address this, given what you just laid out about the role of social media in spreading this misinformation and disinformation? It's, this is a really big challenge, because if you think about this, President-elect Biden, his core constituency is women, black people and brown people. Those are the groups that turned out in huge numbers to put him over the top. And if you look at it, they those particular groups are particularly harmed by extremism on internet platforms. And so they are counting on President-elect Biden to take strong action. You need to see it in three areas, safety, privacy, and competition. So think of safety as rules that create liability for the people, the engineers and executives, as well as the corporations, when they do harm, to change the incentives so that they anticipate and mitigate harm before it happens. Privacy is about giving people control of their lives again. If you look at those people who are at the Capitol, many of them are you know, folks who six months ago would have fit right in normally, but now believe in things that are, if you will, so hostile, they were willing to attack our government. And, you know, that is the result of manipulation because people have their data has been captured by these Internet platforms who are using it to manipulate people's behavior. So that's a really bad thing. We need to regulate that by forcing corporations to ask permission to use any data in any business context. And then lastly, on competition, we need to make sure that we can have alternative business models that come to market. That means that companies like Google, companies like Facebook, companies like Amazon cannot control markets while also participating in them. They can't block out competitors. And lastly, we really need to break them up in tiny little pieces so that we can see new startups and new ideas come to market that are not harmful. The Biden administration is getting a lot of pressure, but I think their instinct is to focus elsewhere. And I think that's going to create political challenges. I'm hopeful that they recognize that in order to beat the pandemic, to beat COVID, they have to get rid of disinformation. They have to change the business model of Google and Facebook and other companies so that they can actually put out the pandemic and get the economy going again. Because right now, disinformation on these platforms is the biggest obstacle they face.
these tasks you're spelling out just seem so overwhelming. And with respect to competition, both Democrats and Republicans have said that some tech companies have grown too big. So could Silicon Valley face specifically some antitrust scrutiny here with the incoming Biden administration? The thing that's most interesting about this is that there is a remarkably great consensus. This is one of the few areas of policy in which there is a significant Republican interest in seeing change. And you see it in several areas of what I'm talking about here. There are people who are very concerned about safety, which is where Section 230, that's the piece that creates the safe harbor for Internet platforms. So they have no liability, even when they do great harm. And so there's both Democrats and Republicans who favor big changes. There are many people who favor getting rid of it entirely. I expect to see something happen there. I think also on antitrust, the Trump administration actually was the first presidential administration in roughly 30 years to do anything significant in antitrust relative to tech companies. And actually, that's, uh, let's call it 20 years. And so that's a very, very big deal. And when I look at that, I think to myself that Biden isn't going to have to do all the work, that there are plenty of people in Congress and there are people who are already in the government who understand the issues. And so I do expect something to happen. What I'd love to see is to have President-elect Biden stand up and say, this really matters and give permission and incentive to state legislatures and state attorneys general, as well as to his own administration in Congress, to take the actions necessary to revive our economy and get away from monopoly and back to capitalism. All right. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see what comes here in this new administration. Some of these problems, as I mentioned uh, earlier, just seem gargantuan. And we are so entangled with these social media platforms that the idea of regulation now seems so complex. But we'll uh, continue to watch it, as I know you, you will. Roger McNamee. Yeah, go ahead. Thought. Very quickly. Okay. Yep, we've got about a minute okay. left. Mm -hmm. We have to imagine a different kind of social media. We have to stop looking at Google and Facebook as the only way to do this. There are a lot of other ways to do it. We just have to create the space. We've done this before. Chemicals used to be a dangerous industry. Building trades used to be. We have fixed problems just as big as this many times in our past. Right. And, and along with that, though, it's important to have inclusivity in the formation of these new platforms, whatever and they might be. So there aren't blind spots that we know currently exist in all of our platforms. We could talk to you all day about this. So much to cover. Roger McNamee. Roger, thank you so much.